one common misconception uh, of uh, CPO initiations is they've been around since the 1890s. As it turns out, CPO initiations really began to appear during World War II as minor pranks that generally did not violate Navy regulations. They also did not have any training value. Initiations were not intended to train you how to be a chief. It was simply entertainment for the guys who were already CPOs. However, things began to change in the 1970s. Many of the chiefs during this era had mixed feelings about initiations. The number of women, for example, increased exponentially from about 5,000 in 1970 to over uh, 50,000 a decade later. As a result, CPO initiations changed years earlier because of inappropriate lewd pranks that were now viewed as a violation of regulations and policy. However, at sea, especially on submarines, CPO initiations uh, continued as usual with those all-male crews. Alcohol abuse at CPO initiations became an issue in the 1980s and 1990s. CPO initiations were often described as drunk fests with no professional training, but simply entertainment for the genuine CPOs. During this time, professional training associated with CPO initiation was generally zero. Even though the often given reason for CPO initiations was to train new chiefs, CPO initiations were often compared to college fraternity initiations and parties. It came to a head in 1988. Chief of Naval Operations Admiral Trost came very close to banning CPO initiations as a result of egregious alcohol-related incidents. Several of these related to the death or injury of naval personnel. This included a growing number of DUI incidents related to CPO initiations. Many of these incidents were reported by the press, which drew the attention of Congress, but it just wasn't DUIs. Many CPO initiations were getting out of hand with crude and lewd behavior. There was a conflict of Navy regulations with regard to hazing by creating an unsafe and hazardous condition for selectees. This in turn focused the attention on the CNO towards eliminating CPO initiations and simply having a pinning ceremony. However, the Master Chief Petty Officer of the Navy, Dwayne Bushy, presented a plan to the CNO to implement reforms to CPO initiations. The first step would be to ban alcohol consumption by CPO selectees during the initiation. He just looked at me and says, Admiral Board has told you, gave you your order. You will do away with CPO initiations. I said, well then, sir, you better get a new microphone right now. I said, you hired me as the Master Chief of the Navy to lead the CPO mess. You haven't given me the opportunity to do that. So if you don't have enough faith in me, then you need to fire me right now or give me the opportunity to fix it. And he stared at me for a while and he said, it is going to be a very emotional issue. He says, tell me what you're going to do. And I said, here it is right here. I prepared and I had that outline written up. I called all the fleet and force NAS chiefs. I'd call all the Nick Ponds. Uh, so I had my ducks in a row, and he looked at my plan of action, what I was going to do for CPO initiation, and he says, I'll ride with you one year. You don't fix it, we're doing away with it. Over the following decades, CPO initiations would slowly evolve into a program that now lives up to the initial reasons for having them in the first place. CPO initiations have been managed by the MCPON since MCPON Black. For decades, the MCPONs have published annual guidance on CPO initiation. Each MCPON has championed reforms and the expectations of chief petty officers down to the individual CPO. Senior enlisted leadership is now held accountable for any inappropriate, unsafe incidents which occur during uh, CPO initiations. However, many CPO initiations were still out of bound with uh, Navy regulations. McPond Bushy was relieved by McPond Hagen in 1992. During Hagen's uh, tenure, the Navy got a better handle and control over CPO initiations, which uh, eventually set the groundwork for meaningful training. I took down the plan. I spent 45 minutes laying out the plan. I took all the exhibits in a big Xerox box. And Admiral Borda said, I'm not sure how I feel. I am sure that I don't like CPO initiation. I haven't liked the looks that I've had at CPO initiation, and I'm not sure how. I'm going to go. That was Friday afternoon, late. 
I went back up the hill with a heavy heart. Wednesday morning, midweek the next week, the CNO said, I'm going to give you a go. I said, you won't regret it. The next time I saw him in person a couple of days later, I said, we won't embarrass you. You won't regret it. You won't have it. He said, no, no, stop. Somebody will screw it up. We will deal with it on the basis of what it is. But don't make me promises you can't keep. Don't ca You can't cash that check, so don't write it. He had a great attitude, but he didn't have to do that. He could have as easily said, CPO initiation is extinct. We will have a pinning ceremony that, uh, you know, that was what he was being urged to do. Over the following years, the MECPONs have continued to oversee the training of CPO selectees. Traditions, as long as they're good. Now, we had the CPO initiations, which got out of hand, we have to admit. Well, that, that wasn't good. Crossing the equator. I think that is good because that builds on the morale of our troops, our crews, ships' crews and all. And you see the anticipation there. Now. Then you issue them the certificate, and it's something they hold on to for the rest of their life. And I think uh, tradition, uh, knowing that those people went through the great ports of the United States, that's what helped keep this country free. And I, that's, to me, is, tradition is of great value.